hello guys so in this section we are going to be building out our ui using uh, react and more specifically we are going to be using uh, a react framework called next.js and again if you are not a front end developer that is completely fine uh, you can just pull this code you know clone this repository and then just put in the commands that i tell you to put in okay so you just need to run this npm run dev and that is going to spin up the server and everything should work perfectly fine okay but if at all you are interested in front end okay so this particular part is for you if you're not interested always like you know skip over it but it would still i believe it would still help uh, to know on a very high level how things are working on the front end okay so uh, to start off with i'm going to be using as i said i'm going to be using next js which is going to be a framework of react okay so if i go to react.dev you can see that you know next js is uh, uh, something that react recommends as well and this is the command that i ran okay so basically open uh, a directory and then run this particular command and that is going to give you this boilerplate code okay so once you have this uh, this is where everything is going to start okay so this app folder is going to be present in this brand new project structure okay inside of this you would also find a page.tsx you know this is going to be the file where the topmost component uh, in your entire application is going to sit so what i mean by that is uh, if i just go and okay so if i just uh, you know let's let's say i get rid of all of this and i just say something like hello world so if i save this and i come back to the ui you can see that it says hello world right so let me actually go back let me undo all of the changes and now you can see we have the uh, the earlier ui right so this is going to be the topmost file and this home is going to be the topmost uh, container that that is going to be the starting point of our application so if i scroll down to the very bottom in this return part you should be able to see we have the header and the message area and the input bar so what are these three things this header is just going to be the static okay it doesn't do anything actually okay it's just going to be there for the um, aesthetics right and then we have the message area and this message area is for you know whatever shows up in this particular window okay so if it is a user it should come on the right side if it is not a user it should come on the left side so all these things are going to be taken care of by this particular component the message area component okay so we, we don't want to go too deep in the weeds and try to figure out what is doing what uh, if you want to do that just pull the code and then you know uh, you can take your own time with it but since this is not going to be a front end focused course uh, i'm going to be skipping over it quickly so we have the header message area and then finally we have the input bar okay so this is what we're talking about so anytime we type something in here uh, we are going to be you know uh, grabbing a hold of that current value and then we're setting it the, setting the current value right here and then anytime an enter is pressed in that case we are going to fire this particular event handler called handle submit okay so this is the ui part let's scroll up and let me show you what we're doing right here step by step we are maintaining the list of messages right here how can i help you this is something that we are hard coding right here okay so we are assigning it uh, an id a message id and then we are also having this is user property and that is going to be false in this case right because this you uh, the ai is only asking this particular message right so it's going to be false and the type is going to be message so there's going to be different types of uh, you know data that is going to be populated here right so uh, in some cases it could be the search query in some cases it could be it could be the search results in all those cases the type is going to be different accordingly we can you know show different ui for that okay so before we move on to that let me show you you know what are the other things that this object could possibly hold so this is going to be a typescript interface you can see that you know id is going to be a number which we've already seen the content is going to be string which we've already seen is user and then the type and then is loading okay so uh, right after the request hits the server and before the llm actually starts generating something we are showing a typing uh, ui right so if i say i am harish okay so in this case you can see there's going to be a typing ui right so that is going to be maintained by this 
is loading okay and then we have this search info right so this is going to contain stages query and urls so stages is basically like you know uh, initially uh, we could be searching the internet okay searching could be a stage and then uh, you know reading could be the next stage and then writing right okay so these are the different stages why are we maintaining it i'm just maintaining it because uh, to show the ui in a certain way okay so let me show you what i mean so i'm going to be using the same query that we've been using so i'm going to ask you know when is the next SpaceX launch okay so in this case okay so you can see that we are searching the web that is going to be one stage right and then we are uh, you know reading it and then we are writing it so it's all going to be part of this entire thing is going to be part of one particular AI message response so that's how we can think about it okay so it's called it's all going to be part of one message so we look at that so okay so this is going to be the main method okay so 99 percent of all the logic is going to be maintained at this one handle submit method okay so what happens whatever happens when we you know type something and we press enter so this particular event is going to get triggered so coming down so this current message okay so whatever the user is currently typing that is going to be maintained here and then we are going to create a new message id okay we're just going to take the grab the uh, the maximum id that is present in this existing list and then we're just adding one to it okay so that is all that we're doing and the next thing is we're just grabbing the current user message and then we're updating the state right here okay so this is going to be a synchronous operation so immediately we can just add uh, this new item in the list of messages so you can see that you know i'm harish if i say this thing immediately we expect it to show up here okay so that is what this particular this thing does and then let's look at what what we're doing okay so we're clearing it out because we don't want it to linger on here okay we want that to be cleared so that that's why we're clearing this out and then this is where you know the actual uh you know uh, the streaming receiving the, all these streamed chunks is going to happen okay so inside of this try block okay so the first thing that i'm doing is i'm going to create uh you know a loading um you know so uh, what we do is uh, when we type something here we can see that you know there's something loading right so essentially what we're doing is we're creating this ai response id okay we're setting the content to empty string the user is uh false so that it shows up on the left side and not on the right side the type is again going to be messages we're setting the is loading to true okay because the chunks would not have started to come yet right and then search info none of these stages would have started to happen and the next thing is we are constructing the url okay so we know that this is going to be the api endpoint right so this is going to be localhost 8000 exactly where our server is listening to right so we are going to grab this particular url and then we are going to construct this entire url we are passing in the user input as well so whatever message that the user has entered that is going to be set right here and then we are checking if the checkpoint id is present or not initially the checkpoint id is not going to be present so we are going to come down and then this is very important guys so we know that we are dealing with server sent events on the server side right so how is the client actually going to you know know that you know events are getting emitted okay so something is being streamed so how do i capture it so the browser actually gives you this particular api browser api called event source okay so this is going to be very important so we are using this to connect the server sent event endpoint using event source okay so we are providing the url right here we are initializing it okay so any time there is any event at all being consumed or received on the client side this particular event handler is going to get this particular callback function is going to get triggered okay so this is going to be this is where most of our logic is going to be done okay so in case there is an error this particular block is going to be executed but you can see that that is going to be the end of it so let's look at what is the first thing that we are doing okay so from this event we are going to get whatever data that was sent from the server side okay so we are extracting the data from that we are parsing it and then we now have the object right here right now we are checking uh, what type is it okay so there's a couple of different types that we're checking for so now you can see that we have like five different six different types that we are checking for we had the checkpoint type we had the content type search start type okay so if it's checkpoint we're just going to store it on the client side using this particular you know uh, use effect okay so that for the next follow-up question by the user we can just attach it okay so that's what we're doing right here okay so we can just um where is it so we, if it is there we're just going to attach it in this particular query param so this way the server is going to know uh, you know which particular session uh, it is and it can continue the memory from it 
right? So coming down, so this is going to be data type checkpoint and then we have the content. So if you're dealing with the content, we are just going to whatever data is being received, we are going to, you know, add it to this streamed content variable. Okay, initially it's going to be an empty string. We're just adding, adding, adding. So, you know, if it says, hi Harish, how can I assist you today? So initially uh, the content is going to be high and then, okay, it's going to append it. Okay, and then it's going to add it, add it, add it to this particular streamed content. And then as and when it is coming, we are also updating the state right here. Okay, so that we can actually reflect it in the UI. And then let's move on to the next thing. So we have data type search start, right? So along with this, okay, let's search for the search start in this thing. So you can see that along with the search start, we are going to provide the query as well, right? So whatever the internet search query, so we are going to grab a hold of the query. We are going to add it in the state as well. Okay, so the URL is still going to be an empty string. And then uh, as usual, we are going to update the AI message with the search info. The same thing for the search results as well. So we are looking at, you know, the data URLs. Okay, and then uh, we are going to update the URLs right here. So we are going to get the URLs from here. Okay, so if I search for the search results, you should be able to see that we are sending the URLs, right? So we're grabbing a hold of that and then we are updating the state again. So the minute we update the message there, we are going to show it in the UI. And then finally, we have the end uh, event. So if we get this end event, we are just going to close the event source. Okay, so we don't have to keep it open more than we absolutely have to, right? So we are going to immediately close it. And that is it guys. So uh, if you are interested in, you know, what we are putting inside of the components, it's just going to be some, you know, tailwind CSS. It's just going to be some, you know, uh, animation. We are using some animation, etc., etc. And even if you're not a front end developer guys, and even if you don't, you know, understand this code, it's going to be pretty simple. Just copy paste it to ChatGPT or Claude, ask it to walk you through it. And I'm sure it would start making sense. So that is it for the front end code guys. So the next part uh, is going to be, we are going to be deploying our uh, server code. We are going to be deploying our AI agent. So I'll see you in the next section.